Hold on a second. Getting coconut in the eye. I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for 38 years. I'm gonna test some gadgets that open things and see if I can find a way to make them better. I gotta tell you, this is a tough one. Angle this to the inside. Give it a curve, make it an oval. These are the products I'm going to test. Cocoa Jack. Egg Cracker. Nut Cracker. Handy Can Opener. Jar Opener. Cocoa Jack. This is designed to open up young coconuts. Let's see how effective it is. This will involve a lot of banging. Okay, I feel like I may be through. Let's give it a shot. Oh, not quite. Let me give it another hit. Okay, I am through the hard shell of the coconut, but not through the edible part of the coconut. So I'm just gonna grab that open by hand. So you can see it opened up the coconut pretty easily. Whoa! At this point I would get a straw, or two, if you have a friend, and uh, just suck it all down. Let's assume you don't have a cocoa jack in your kitchen or a machete, and let's try it with a typical knife. On a one to five scale in terms of effectiveness, I would give the Cocoa Jack a four. There's a bit of a technique to it, but I think you can get that technique down and it works well. The more destructive you are in your mind, the better off you may be. Now I'm gonna try the left-handed oil test. By oiling up my non-dominant hands, I'm simulating what this may be like to use by someone who may have dexterity problems like arthritis. Let's see if I can grab this and start whacking away. Okay, I may be through, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Let's try to pry that up a bit. Hmm, not quite yet. Let me give it a few more whacks. Okay, that's coming up. So, I'll push this out, up, and we're open. So, that took a bit more work, partly because my left hand wasn't whacking as hard as my right hand. Also, the angle that this device goes in makes a big difference. You want the leading edge, you know, far edge, to go in first, but you also want to make sure that you catch the rest of the perimeter. In terms of usability, uh, boy, this is really out of control. I can squeeze this as hard as possible with my left or my right hand, but with a slippery hand, this thing would just spin freely. This suffers the same problem. It's totally round, and uh, as you're prying it up, it doesn't give you the ability to give it a bit of a twist this way or that way. If you had a weak hand or if you had some sort of grip problems, you would notice the same issues. In terms of usability, on a one to five scale, I give this a three and a half. It's pretty good, but there's definitely room for improvement. Let's think about a redesign. Usually hammer handles like this have a heel, and what that heel does is keep it from flying out of your hands. Then somewhere around the middle would have a bit of a belly, and that belly let you grab onto something. So as fingers wrap around, they have something to grab onto. So the same goes for this handle, but I would also look at the top of this. So we're looking down on this. I would at least experiment with giving this a bit of a forward leading tooth. So have this come up a bit. Because what this would do is pierce more effectively into the side of the coconut. I think also when you're prying it up, it may have some advantages. My buy rating for the Cocoa Jack on a scale of one to five is a five. It's fun to break into things. Nut cracker. A very violent, destructive, spring-loaded nut cracker. There are two ways to do this, obviously, with the seam and against the seam. I'm gonna do it with the seam so the seam is pointing up. I'm gonna go for full destruction. I'm gonna pull as high as, as I think it wants to go and let's see what happens. Okay, and what I have done is shattered the walnut, and actually pretty good. I have some shrapnel and some walnut pieces. Let's try it again. I'm gonna do it a little bit lighter this time. Full disclosure, I grew up on the Jersey Shore playing pinball, and my touch here should be better than amateurs. So I'm gonna um, give it a little bit less of a spring pull and let it go. And 
just a little bit of destruction here, but the advantage here is the walnuts themselves are still intact. So I'm kind of liking this. In terms of effectiveness on a scale from one to five, I would give it a five because you can totally annihilate the walnut. Time for the left-handed oil test. Now I will say picking this up is a little tricky. If my hand is oily, I've got to get my fingernails under it and the way it's shaped just doesn't allow me to pick it up easily. And up top, the ball is just as easy to grab. So no problem there. So any sort of dexterity problems, any sort of pinch or grip problems, uh, not a big problem here. I think you can get your fingers under here. You know, worst case, you can slip your fingers under that way. You don't really have to pinch and you could still let this go and it, it'd still be okay using this. In terms of usability, I would rate this a five. I still think it's very usable, but let me pull this aside. I think I would extend the hold handles out further. I do notice that when your fingers are very close here, there's a sense that you're gonna get pinched when, when the spring is released. I feel like that's inevitably gonna happen at one point. So I would just spread these out a little more, give it a few more millimeters of width. And other than that, I think it's all good to go. So I would use this. In terms of a buy rating, I would give this a five. I would buy one for myself and buy it for other people that I like. So I would keep this in my repertoire of nut crackers. Egg cracker. It is designed to crack eggs. Okay, let's test its effectiveness. Step one is place the egg in the egg holder. Put it over the pan, get ready to squeeze. And it worked. The egg separator kept the yolk in place. Still getting my hands a little messy getting the egg out of the holder. This white piece underneath is detachable and it's an egg separator. It separates the yolk from the white. It's a little bit hard to pull out. Let's try it again now without the egg separator. And the egg is out. I actually helped design an egg separator years ago and found that cracking an egg to a concave surface was more effective than cracking an egg to a convex surface. On average, it gives a wider crack. When you do it to the outside, what you're doing is kind of piercing a bit of the egg. I'm gonna compare this device now with just cracking an egg by hand. does what it's supposed to do. So in terms of effectiveness, I would give it a four. There's a little bit of a cleanup and there's a little bit of touching that you have to do, which is driving it down a bit. Let's do the left-handed oil test. I will place an egg, give it a squeeze, and it worked just as well, left-handed or right-handed. You'll notice that when it's squeezed together, there's still a gap here. So there wasn't an opportunity to reduce the amount of stretch that you have and for smaller hands, not rely on fingertips. In terms of usability, I would give it a three. Could use some improvement. The plastic is rather cheap and looks rather breakable. And the things that hold the egg look especially breakable. I would pull these handles closer together, probably give it a curve so the pinky gets in play and still do that in a way that makes sure that once they come down together, there's no pitch point. So you don't want to come so far that you pinch your skin. There's still plenty of room here to provide some more space for the fingers to come into play. That being said, I just want to point out, there's no real reason for this product to exist. In terms of a buy rating, I give this a one. It does have some comedic value, but you kind of just ask yourself why because it's just as easy to crack an egg by hand. Jar opener. It is designed to provide more leverage and grip for opening jar lids. Let's see if we get small enough to hold this nail polish top and spin and that opens. Now, nail polish is pretty interesting removing caps because as you're polishing nails, what you tend to do is wipe the nail polish on the edge which means what you're doing is, when you put it back is you're gluing the top to the nail polish. Okay, so let's try it now with the baby food jar and give it a squeeze and twist. And it's a little slippery here. It's not that easy to control. Let's try it again. Mm -mm, this one's kind of slipping. 
So I'm not that thrilled about doing the smaller size jar. Let's give it one more try. I'm gonna squeeze harder. Oh, I hear the pop. Let's try spaghetti sauce. I'm going to squeeze from this side, get some leverage on holding that top open. Spin, it's slipping, but actually it's moving okay. So yeah, that worked fine. The rubber that's being used here is a little slippery. So it's not grabbing the lid as much as, as you would hope. In terms of effectiveness, I would give this a three. It may help in some cases, but I think it could be a whole lot better. Since this is a two-handed operation, I'm really gonna put oil on both hands. I'm going to start with the jelly. I'm going to hold the jar with my right hand and use the jar opener with my left. Not behaving as well as I would hope. It's really not grabbing the lid. Let me try something a little different. I'm gonna try a different part of the rubber piece here. See if it grabs any better, but boy, it's certainly not behaving. No, not loving it. It's not really happening. I think what's changed is first of all, my right hand being oily is putting the jar a bit out of control and I'm just not getting the grip on the lid. So not loving this. For usability rating, I would give this a one. It's just too difficult to use and a little too frustrating. I'm gonna give a quick review of jar opening physics. So let me just put a little marker here on the jar. Now watch that mark and watch my hands. My hand is moving further because it's in a bigger diameter than the jar. The longer this handle is, the more mechanical advantage you would have. I gotta tell you, this is a tough one because I think there are some inherent flaws in this design. It's giving you four separate diameters and two of the diameters are less advantageous in terms of providing leverage. So I think I would make one that's this big so that you have maximum leverage here and make another one for small jars. And again, so you have some leverage here. And I'm afraid to solve this type of design would meet several different products. And the rubber, I would use something with a lot more friction. This is just too slippery. It's sort of a slimy feeling rubber and um, it's just not behaving. It's not grabbing the way you would hope. So my buy rating for this is one, meaning I wouldn't even give it away to someone I didn't like. Handy can opener. It is a battery powered device that is designed to open cans. And when you can't do simple tasks that you used to be able to do with ease, a bit of depression sets in. You feel a bit isolated, or at least you feel dependent on other people to help. So making kitchen devices assistive like this is really beneficial for everyone. The curve here and the blade sticking out make it relatively simple to understand how this can opener needs to be placed. Okay, so let's give it a go. I'm gonna place it, press the button on top, and stand back. Now, there's a magnet on here, so the can top comes off automatically. Although you can feel some, uh, an edge to it, it seems and feels less dangerous than the old fashioned type of can openers. Now I'm gonna try a more traditional can opener and see how they compare. So in terms of effectiveness, I would give this a five. Press the button, let it go, and just watch it wiggle and spin the can around. So oil on the left hand, make it slippery, grab a new can. Pick it up and this isn't that easy. I can get it on there, but I find myself struggling a bit. Let's give it a shot. The magnet didn't work that time. Uh, it cut the can. I do feel though this shape is not that conducive to holding or grabbing if your hand is slippery. I would give it a four and a half. So almost perfect. The body of the can opener is made of three pieces. There's this top piece, there's a bottom piece that's holding the cutter unit, and then there's the battery door. When plastic is molded, liquefied plastic goes into the mold, it then hardens and it needs to pop out of the mold. Just like an ice cube needs to come out of an ice cube tray. So ice cube trays are tapered towards the bottom so that the ice will come out easily. 
Same thing with plastic. So you always have to look at what's called draft angle. You need a little bit of draft on there, a bit of angle so it pops out. So here is that top piece. And here is the bottom piece, which has a minimum draft angle here. So what I would do on the bottom piece, without adding another piece, is either increase this angle, it'd still be very moldable, or maybe even doing a reverse angle. So we want to get our fingers underneath the device. If we do a reverse angle here, it'd be easy to get our fingers underneath it and lift it more easily. So this seems like a bit of a fussy change, but remember this device is an assistive device. It helps people open cans who may have trouble with manual can openers. My buy rating for this would be five, and I didn't think this would work as well as it does, so I am actually pleasantly surprised. So some of the products we looked at were a little more fun than essential, but toys are good, and it's extremely important to have fun sometimes.